pretty cool. It's freaking heavy. <laughs> Where are you going? Where? Don't look the, uh, we're in a shop. Stand there. All right, guys. Well, we are back with the second installment of the intern projects. This is a very heavy deer head made out of uh, quasi laminated 10 gauge sheets that we cut out. And then Sayer took over and finished it all out. Yeah. What do you say? I like it a lot. All right, let's do it. Every couple weeks, my intern needs to come up with some sort of project to show off at school, show what he's been doing during the internship. And he said he wanted to make a steel deer head. So we went over to makecnc.com and purchased a set of plans for this head. They're actually made for laser cutting, so we had to make some adjustments to get them to work with the plasma table. But now that they're good to go and everything fits together, we just moved right on over to cutting out the rest of the files. So if you guys have been watching for a while, you know I'm not really about hawking products, but when I find something good, I am gonna talk about it. And this magnetic base here, I think it's called the magnetic chuck in most other applications, is a great addition to the shop. It'll hold parts down, even small parts. You don't need power. Uh, you just flip that little lever there. And when you think about it, trying to do a small part like this with clamps, it's, it's just gonna be a nightmare. And here, even hanging off the edge, it'll hold that piece. You can work on it, do all the grinding you need to do. And I've been pretty impressed with them. They're not super cheap. Uh, this one ran me close to 300 bucks but I can tell you it's been well worth the money and I'll have links to smaller ones that aren't as expensive down in the description. Now we're on to assembly. For the most part, the pieces are just gonna slide together. Yeah, just, just make sure you're looking at the front. How do you say you can tell? So you look at, see this angle? Yeah. It's always gonna slope away. Yeah. Okay. So as we continued on with the assembly, most of the pieces just slipped right into place. A couple needed a little bit of force until we ended up with one of the side pieces that just would not fit into place. And we realized pretty quickly that there were some cut errors on the plasma table. So we took it apart and went at it with this Milnerhofen grinding disc, which has diamond particles in the faces as well as the cutting edge so that you can really get into little slots and open them up. It's also great for shaping. I want to give a thank you to my buddy JK Canvas for sending this out to me. With everything assembled, we're gonna jump over to the Pro Pulse 200 and dial in the settings we want. I like to add about an extra volt to make your tax a little bit hotter. And Sayer's gonna go ahead and put the whole thing together. Um, just a couple minutes worth of tack welding there. Tack, 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 tack. It's all of those? Yeah, because the centers aren't attached, yeah. right? Okay. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I went all the way down through here and did it up, yeah, up in the side of it. It's not gonna fit perfectly. Grind off these. Okay. As much as we had hoped that the laser cutting files would translate over to steel, these little tabs to mount the head to the back plate just did not. So, Sayer ground them off. Done. But hey, when you've got a welder, you can make anything into whatever you need it to be. So we just took the head and welded it directly down to this back plate, then jumped over to the die grinder to open up some keyholes in the backmost plate. So we could just slip this onto two screws in the wall to mount it. I first showed Sayer how to do it on a tab that we're not gonna use. Basically, you just make a hole. I'm using a die grinder to do it here. And you want that hole big enough so it could slip over the head of a screw and it's gotta be at the bottom of the tab, so then the screw shank would just slide up into that tab, holding everything in place. In order to leave enough room for the screw heads between these two back panels, 
when we welded one to the other, put some 1 8 inch rods in there just to stand them off, and we could just easily pull those out afterward. It gives it kind of a cool look in my opinion too. Well, not to go all Mad Max on you or anything, but we just didn't think the antlers looked right. They were a little too static with everything at 90 degree angles to each other. So I grabbed the torch, heated them up, and then Sayer put a twist on them to give them the look he wanted. And you know, this deer head was done. So we put it up for a test mount, checked out how it looked, and that those keyholes would hold, and they did. So this one's done. All right, guys, there it is. Let's put a little twist on the antlers. I think it looks better. All right, cool, yeah. cool. Guys, you want to see some more? What do you need to do, right? Subscribe. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you. Bye.